Welcome to the second part of the presentation series, Introduction to Sampling for Mineral Processing. In this video, we will look at the sampling basics, which will include some definitions, three, two, one-dimensional sampling, the limitation and extractions, rebounding effects, cutter speed, and geometry. The purpose of sampling is for resource definition, optimizing resource utilization, process control, metallurgical accounting, and ultimately maximizing profitability. Sampling is where the measurement process begins. Unfortunately, the whole measurement chain is corrupted at the outset if the sample is not representative. An accurate analysis of samples submitted to the lab can largely be a waste of time and lead to some optimal recovery in processing plants and a loss of sales revenue. This last statement also includes samples used for on-stream analyzers such as XRF and particle size systems. Sampling is based on applied statistics and probability theory and as such as a science. All too often this is taken lightly in the mineral processing industry resulting in lost revenues in the millions of dollars or more. As stated by Merckx, it is the process of collecting a set of primary increments for a sampling unit in such a manner that the measurements on the test or analysis sample are significant for the sampling unit. There is a golden rule for sampling which states that for correct sampling, all parts of the material being sampled must have an equal probability of being collected and becoming part of the final sample for analysis. If this rule is respected at the outset, then extraction of representative samples is largely assured. If this rule is not respected, then sample bias is easily introduced, and no amount of replicate sampling and analysis will reduce bias once it is present. Here we show the difference between precision and accuracy. The precision at both sides is the same, plus or minus one. However, one set of results is biased by 15. A sample is a quantity of material taken from an ore and which represents the quality characteristics of the ore from which it was taken from for a specific sampling lot. A lot could be a 12 hour or a shift of plant operation, 2,000 tons of feed, or a stockpile. An increment is a quantity of material collected by a single operation of a sampling implement. Therefore, a sample is made up of one or more increments. A sampling system is composed of a sampling implement and a sampling protocol. It must collect samples representative of the sampling lot or unit. Sampling systems must be flexible enough to permit adjusting the number of increments collected for each sampling lot as this can affect the sample precision. Here is an example of three-dimensional sampling. These can be ore deposits, stockpiles, slurry in tanks, or any container that does not permit equal access to all particles. Sampling is usually done by surface sampling, for example, core samples. This is prone to bias for non-homogeneous ores. These can sometimes be transformed into 2 or 1D sampling. Here is an example of 2D sampling. These can be rail cars, trucks, a ship's hold, or bulk storage. This is sampled by dividing the surface into a grid and samples are taken to the bottom of each unit using a probe. This is not practical for ores with particles over about half an inch. This kind of sampling creates a large amount of sample and possibly poor precision. This can sometimes be transformed into 1D sampling. This is an example of a 2D rail car sampling system. Here we have a carriage which traverses over the rail car and a set of augers which are driven into the sample lot to extract several sample increments. Here is an example of 1D sampling. This is the easiest and optimally the best situation. Locations are at discharge points of conveyor belts or head chutes and at exit points of slurry pipes or transfer points. The increment can remove an entire strata of material or cut across the complete stream. Access to each particle is permitted. Here we have an example of a 1D slurry sampling system. Three tailing lines are pumped up to the sampler. Inside the sampler is a cutter which is driven back and forth to extract increments on a timed basis. The slurry then drops down to a launder and is sent onwards for further mass or volume reduction. 
In order to obtain representative samples, the requirements for proper increment delimitation are Samplers should cut a slice of material of constant thickness. A proportionate amount is collected from each part of the stream. The slice should cross the complete stream at a constant speed. Electric drives are optimal for this purpose. The cutter should intersect the stream perpendicular to the trajectory of the stream. Every particle must have the same probability of being collected. Here are some examples of increment delimitation. As you can see, sections 1, 2, and 3 have a constant width taken across the sample lot. Sections 4 and 5 are biased towards the top as the width is increasing. This shows an example of correct increment delimitation using a cross stream cutter. The cutter moves across the stream and takes an equal portion of sample from all sections of the stream. This shows an example of correct increment delimitation using a circular path cutter. Again, the cutter moves across the stream and takes an equal proportion of sample from all sections of the stream. But in this case, the cutter blades have a radial geometry. The ends of the blades are separated more since they are moving faster through the stream. For proper increment extraction, the cutter blades need to be aligned to the stream trajectory. They should be perpendicular to the stream trajectory. Also, they need to be long enough so that deflected particles, which should be included in the increment, are not lost. These are examples of correct increment delimitation. You can see the cutter going through the stream. The cutter is in good shape and there is no rejection of particles. The cutter is also long enough to capture the complete flow. For good increment extraction, proper design of the cutter edge geometry is also required. Cutter edges should be perpendicular to the stream and have a maximum thickness of 3 mm. Rebounding fragments that belong to the increment must pass inside the cutter. The cutter opening should be at least three times the top size and a minimum of 10 mm. The blade should have an angle of no more than 20 degrees. The exit size of the cutter should be greater than its inlet size to avoid particle rejection. And for good increment extraction, the cutter should move at a linear speed of less than 0.6 meters per second. Here you can see that some particles are gained and some are lost. This completes the sampling basics section of the introduction to sampling presentations. We at Heath and Sherwood Hope you find this useful and informative, and please watch the rest of the series. If you require more information, you can contact us directly.